Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or rather more fellow alcoholics, people of every age of 21, welcome to day two of the advent calendar. So, if you wonder what happened to the burgers I made yesterday, they fell apart. This is what's left of them. So basically, I just threw them in a Tupperware, now in a sink, and I had something else for lunch that day. Anyways, I'm just going to cook this up a little bit here. I mean, they were mostly cooked, but I'm just making sure they for sure are cooked. And more than likely, I have some lovely homemade tortillas from back from Yuma County. Mrs. Rocaballo makes the best. Uh, just gonna shred some cheese, have the meat, onions, basic loose meat tortilla, uh, burrito. Burrito, if you say it incorrectly. Anyways, but here we go. So I went through, and by the way, some of this you might see, might recognize. <laughs> but, so, what I did is nothing other than organize this down into 30 plus drinks. Now, the problem I realize is as I take ones out and replace them, I'm gonna lose track of what's what. So that's gonna be a problem. Oh well, but that's a problem for future me to handle. Luckily, I'm not him. So, what I'm doing here also is, other than worrying about my truck, it's leaking antifreeze. Here is project one that I'm doing. So it's hard to tell, but these are actually different color wood. Uh, this is maple, this is cherry. And what I'm going to do with that and this, which is teak and um, walnut. So walnut, cherry, hick, uh, maple, tech or teak, however you want to say it. Got some more walnut here. I'm planning on making the Arizona flag as a cutting board. It's gonna be a present for my friend, actually the one I made the table for, as well as uh, <clears throat> raised planter beds. I'm also gonna make a planter bed for my brother, so that's gonna be project number two. I'm also planning on making some other cutting tables for other people. Now, that's optimistic, because I don't have a planer. <laughs> so I have to buy a two, $300 planer to make this project work. Maybe also a biscuit and a biscuit maker, or a biscuit cutter, rather. So the plan is, again, you can kind of see I was doing stuff here. Uh, the flag is normally four feet by six feet. I knocked that down to um, 18 by 12 inches. And then the Arizona flag, if you've never seen it before, do I have yellow? I don't, it is uh, stripes. So 13 stripes with a star in the middle. Let's pretend that's a star. Blue background, alternating red, yellow colors, copper color. So the cherry will be the red stripes. The maple, which is lighter or should be, hopefully when I uh, put the uh, cutting board oil on it, it'll darken everything and you can tell the difference. That's gonna be a fun experiment. Originally I was just gonna use redwood. I mean, it's in the name, but anyways. Uh, so cherry's gonna be the red stripes. Maple's gonna be the yellow stripes. Uh, the walnut will be the blue sky, and this is going to be the star. Now, the reason I'm using these guys is they're hardwoods. They don't, um, the pores should be okay for cooking, I mean, for cutting rather. So that's the main reason. So yeah, that's gonna be the project. I just gotta figure out how to cut. I've been doing math on this, and I hate math, no, yeah. I mean, I didn't think I'd use the Pythagorean theorem in my everyday life, but here we are. So actually here is what I did over Thanksgiving. I was just taking notes, taking measurements and trying to figure stuff out. See, there's a Pythagorean theorem. I said it right one time. So, but that's gonna be roughly, because I figured out here, that's a right angle triangle. So that's nine inches, that's 9.222 repeating. So there you go. So yeah, that's, go that's gonna be my project now. At one point, I was going to use something called Purple Heart, which is a wood from Africa. Beautiful stuff, but it might be toxic. You know, when you're using stuff for cook with, you might not want to pick the toxic stuff. So that's fun. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, enough about all that. This is what we're here for. So just a little what we're doing project wise. By the way, this whole time, my food's been cooking. So if you see smoke coming that way, I have failed. Oh, speaking of fail, oh, a seven. 
I rolled a seven. At least it wasn't a nat, nat one. That's a nat one though. And that's a nat one. Was well, the whole point of random if it's just gonna be that? <laughs> Anyways, so today we are apparently drinking uh, Largo Bay Black Cherry Rum. Uh, rum made with natural flavors, uh, charcoal, filtered. 21% uh, alcohol by volume, 42 proof. So this is below the natural, or the uh, normal spirit line of 40. So this is about half uh, the alcohol of say whiskey, vodka, tequila, et cetera, et cetera. Getting that nice crisp to it. Again, I always overcook meat. That's because I'm a bit cautious. Again, like with the purple heart, I don't want to accidentally poison people or myself. Uh, here we go. So, let's see what this is all about. But again, rum, I don't know, I never tried rum much. Mm. I remember early on when I didn't know any drinks, I would order a rum and coke because, you know, that's what people know. By the way, am I still recording? Quick check. I am. Look at that. Technology works. So, but yeah, I'm, as you can tell, doing some shooting. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Again, rum is always, well, in my experience, always been clear. So, no uh, consistency to talk about. It looks like regular liquid. Smell. Ooh, isn't that delightful? Uh, yeah. Cherry. Not quite the Kool-Aid taste. I mean, a smell. Excuse me. Kool-Aid smell, but akin to it. More candle smell. And I mean that candle scent that you usually associate with cherry. Because again, that um, Kool-Aid smell has a distinct fake, well, you associate with fakeness, by the way, loud. That's probably my neighbor's probably gonna get louder as it get closer. But yeah, so it's, yeah, it's right there in sugar, cherry smell town as it were a nice little place if you can stand the skyrocketing diabetes rates um anyways but uh here's to um <laughs> turning failures into a delicious burrito anyways here's to uh future projects and being willing to adapt to changes oof shoe fly Interesting. No, okay, not quite no taste goes down, I mean alcohol taste goes down smooth. So the initial taste is just this nice little, not quite syrupy, but definitely sugar, uh, cherry taste. And as it goes down, it's polite about, hey, there's alcohol, just whoosh, little wish taste on the edges as it goes down, almost, as politely as it introduces itself, it excuses itself. And the taste afterwards is just this cherry. But again, artificial cherry. But good, good artificial cherry. So I'm not going to say like it tastes like I just ate a cherry, but it definitely tastes like I drank some pretty good cherry juice watered down. But again, which is amazing considering I should have left that on there. Um, considering it was a... Uh, Again, 20% alcohol, 21% alcohol. So again, to be expected. So this is again, a little above the liqueur line, but definitely way below the um, standard spirit line. So nice, again, goes down smooth, very good tasting. Uh, mix that with, you know, I've been mixing, again, uh, cherry liqueurs and stuff like that into my iced tea. This would be perfect because, again, it has that sugary, sweet fruit taste, little alcohol. So, but uh, otherwise, Pepsi. It'd be spot on for tex a pe a Pepsi. That uh, cherry Pepsi, this would be a good way to make your own alcoholic version of it. So, hmm, very nice. But anyways, so, yeah, that's cooking. I'm going to... Grate up some hatch chili, uh, I forget what are you, uh, New York State cheese. Were you Gouda? 
Yeah, you're Gouda. Anyways, some Hatch chili cheese on top of my bacon, beef, and chorizo mix. And otherwise, I'll get started working. <laughs> it just presents itself right off the bat, like, hey, your truck's broken. Lovely. Anyways, and I'll get right on to this. And hey, now, number 10 will replace number one, and that's how we start with the next one. So, so far, natural ones is what this thing starts, which is funny, because we're on day number two. Uh, but, like I said, I just need to start cutting these guys and getting measured because I have more than enough. So I can mess around, get the right measurement and just go from there. And what I may do, because the idea is to make the stripes, have that be one sec, oh here, I'll show you. So I'm gonna make the top section here as one piece, this bottom piece, which is again, just that by itself. Then once they're both glued together, cut out the star in, in uh, both of them and then make the star, and then put the star in the middle, glue the three pieces together. So that's gonna be the plan. So make the two edges, cut out the star, make the star, glue it together. So then run it through a planer multiple times till it's flat as I want it. So that's gonna be project number one. Project number two is for sure my brother's planter bed. Project number three, four, I have ideas. But first things first, let's do one at a time. So anyways, enough about that. Have you started your Christmas shopping yet? Have you decorated? I'm getting my stuff out. Again, what have you done so far for Christmas? So otherwise, the most important thing I hope you're doing is relaxing, staying safe, and doing your best to stop the spread. So all that aside, thanks again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.